biggest winner on the Dow today by far was Walmart, while Intel was the biggest loser. Over in the S&P, Walmart was also the big winner. Chipotle, the biggest loser. Walmart helping the Dow surge, giving the index its best day, Jeff, since April 10th. What does Walmart say about the overall market and the economy? The economy's strong. I said it to uh, Brian Sullivan two months ago. The economy's stronger than a garlic milkshake. A garlic milkshake? I can't even, I don't even know, like that idea. <laughs> what, yeah, what is that? I mean, if you look at the GDP figures strong. and you look at the final, real final sales, which is a better indicator of the economy than GDP because it excludes net exports and inventories, it was up 5.1%. I still never had a garlic milk. So, well, I, know, I, just, I know you have thoughts on Walmart, not on maybe. You know, we've seen milk. we've seen pretty stagnant wage growth. It hasn't been terrible, but certainly not accelerating in any any real way. Obviously, expectations are that those wages are going to go up, particularly as as unemployment continues to to, to shrink. But uh, in my mind, it's, it's such a positive thing that uh, the Walmart consumer is willing to go out and shop and spend money. So. It, to me, it's an indicator that the confidence that we have overall is is okay, there how, how and much, is robust. How much do you worry about this strong dollar Larry Kudlow policy, if not the president's <laughs> policy? And, 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 and how much uh, do you ultimately worry about it? it this today, today seemed to be as much about China and, and a trade war or no trade war than anything else. No. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe some people don't want to admit this, but maybe Trump's policies are in some way, at least as it relates yep. to China, are working in getting China back to the negotiating table. I, I think that even even uh, in the Obama era, people would yes. say, hey, we got to do something about this. And, and it looks like something is happening. We'll see if anything actually does come to be, though. I mean, Jeff, you've been pretty bullish on this market. I know you still expect it to go higher. So is your expectation that the Chinese do come to the table and make some sort of deal? Uh, we raised some cash in January when our intermediate and short-term models turned negative. We bought the undercut low on February 9th. We've been bullish since then. We've tried two stabs at new all-time highs. Usually it doesn't go through on the first or second try. The third try is the charm. I think we're going to try it again next week. And I, I think earnings continue to come in at 20 percent plus. Um, I think Ed Hyman has a $200 estimate for 2020 on the S&P 500. But what about trade? Well, you've got $110 billion uh, against a $635 billion uh, goods relationship between the U.S. and Canada. So if you divide 110 into 635, that's 17 percent of the total relationship. But if you take 25 percent of the tariffs on 110 billion, it's only 27.5 billion, which is only 4.3 percent of the total relationship. Can we circle back to the Walmart story for one second, which is Doug McMillan today said strong consumer. But you look at some of the other retailers, some are working, some are not. So the question is, is it really a Walmart story, which is to say they spent a lot of money over the past couple of years and, by the way, got banged around in the process, they and did. now maybe it's just working. And, by the way, margins did decline in right. today's report as well. I mean, look, I, I think uh, as a general statement, I don't, I don't know whether you agree or not, Andrew, but Walmart is a company with, a diff with a, simply a different cost structure. Obviously, they put a lot of investment in, but on a day-to-day -day basis, a different cost structure than, than so many other, other retailers. And so I think that gives them flexibility to make the changes they did, whereas for the retail sector more broadly, which is pretty highly levered, which doesn't have the money to make uh, technology investments, it's just going to fall further behind. But I think, I think to your question, I mean, there is a question, right? There, so the margins fell. They're... They're everyday low prices. That's right. But that's what draws people to Walmart, and that's their competitive edge always has been. The fact that consumers are spending, is that really such a bullish sign on the economy if, if, if the Walmart and the other retailers aren't doing as well? Well, look, if, if, if the narrative broadly in this country has been that the gains have gone to the top 10 percent in this country and the gains have not gone to the bottom 50 or certainly the bottom 25 percent, the fact that those who shop at Walmart, feel confident to do so. Uh, to me, it's, you know, you could argue whether it's a leading indicator or a lagging indicator. I think at this point, you'd have to say it's a leading indicator. If, if you're a believer that wage growth is going to fi finally come after us talking about it for five years, I, I, don't, I don't know your yeah. view on that one. Top line revenues were down 3.7 percent. Membership was down 31 percent. Yeah, comp store sales were the best in a decade. It's absolutely true. And the consumer is strong. I don't disagree with that. But if you drill down into it, it wasn't as good as the street thinks. Well, I mean, traffic was up. Ticket sales were up. It was a, it was a pretty solid combination of both. Sam's Club comps were, were even better. I mean, there was a lot to like about this quarter in Walmart. I don't disagree with that. Membership was down about a billion dollars.
and revenues were down. All right, I guess we can debate it. Are you saying <laughs> that the consumer's not as, in as strong shape? I think the consumer's incredibly strong. I think wages have started to finally hook up. They're not keeping up with inflation, but they've started to hook up, and I think that's a good thing.